Are you looking for the secrets on how to maximize your ROI for an industrial trade show? In this video, I'm gonna go through my experience at attending over 50 trade shows and a strategy that we're pushing this year in 2024 for our industrial clients. Twenty twenty four has started, obviously, and now's the time to start planning. What are you going to do with your trade shows? Hopefully, you already planned in Q four of last year and picked the trade shows. But if you didn't, you're like, I don't know what I want to do. Maybe you can get some valuable information out of this live and out of these videos that can help you make those decisions and start your marketing off. It does not matter if you've got a trade show that's happening in October, like Fabtech or IMTS later this year. Things that I'm going to say today are important for you to take into consideration. So the first thing. And we're going to go to the whiteboard for this. I got black. I got black. So the first thing is going to be pick the show. And hopefully you already did it. But if you haven't, here's some tips that I want you guys to think about. <clears throat> when it comes to the shows, you got to look at it. Are you going to exhibit at the show or are you going to attend the show? And there is something to say about attending trade shows. Like, don't think that you always have to exhibit. If you have to first identify who is the target audience at that specific show? So if you're like, I don't want to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars to exhibit at this show because I don't know about the ROI, but it makes sense for me to attend it. If you're going after exhibitors, that's easy. Just walk the show numerous times over the course of those two days, and just have conversations with people. If the if it's the attendees that you're going after, that's a little bit of a different play. You can't go to those shows and walk them expecting to just always be able to grab people out of the aisle way, but you can. You can walk in there, you're walking down the aisle, you look at your competitor's booth, you're you're hawking it, you're eyeing it, and then you see people having conversations. There have been so many times that I have not only exhibited at trade shows and then walked during the lunch break when my associate was covering the booth and just look at the competitors and see who's having conversations and then grab that person that's walking down the aisle, one aisle over, and be like, hey, Joe, um, saw that you work for A, B, and C company. Are you guys open to having a conversation about X, Y, and Z or whatever it is, just sparking a conversation? If you guys are walking the show and going after exhibitors, though, it's a different conversation. They don't want, ideally, to spend time, their valuable time. They spent money for the booth. They don't want to spend time engaging with you if you're not going to buy from them. That's typically how it goes. Now, last year, out of all the trade shows we went to, the Fabtech people were surprisingly warm and inviting. I was not there to try and sell them anything. I was there to learn about them and have a conversation. And numerous times that I had conversations, they're like, well, what is it that you guys do? And we tell them what they do, and that sparks a deeper conversation, and business was generated from it. Just by seeming interested, because I legitimately was. So if you're going after exhibitors, just walk the show, have conversations. Don't go there and try and pitch them, but have conversations with people and be like, hey, so what is it that you guys do here? Ask them questions, compliment how their booth is, compliment their product, their service, whatever it is. And then they'll say, what is it that you guys do at your company? And just say, hey, this is what we do. We're in this space. Uh, if you guys ever need something, I'd love to give you my card and just end it at that. So there is something to say about walking the shows. You either walk it to look at competition and or walk it to say, I might want to exhibit here next year. So I'm going to walk the show to see how it plays out and see what the scope is, how things are set up. Uh, because you can only pick your, you can only pick your booth. Like, is this booth going to be good? You're looking at a map, right? But if you've been to the show before, you know hot spots. You know areas where it's better than just looking at a map and seeing, like, this booth number D127 and knowing, like, oh, it's a 20 by 20 booth, 40 by 40 booth. But walking the show just gives you, uh, at least the year in advance, walking it gives a little bit more appreciation, a little bit more insight into where you could pick. But you have to look at it and say, there's shows that are close to me, and if it's easy for you to get to, there could be a reason for you to get there. Look at competition, look at possibly exhibiting at the show, or engage with people that are attending and have conversations. So much value comes from it. Do not rule that out. If it's something that's close to you or very important to your business that you're going to travel to, think that I can still walk a show and get value from it. You're not going to walk away with 20 or 40 leads, but you can still walk away with, with getting something out of your time spent. You're either going to learn something or have good conversations. But if you're exhibiting at those trade shows, you have to figure out what shows am I going to do? And like I said, hopefully you did that last year, but if you haven't, at least focus on one. At a minimum, look at one trade show and go all in on it. One industry trade show. If you're in packaging, do Pack Expo. If you're in the metal fabrication and forming, do Fabtech 2024 in Orlando. Uh, look at IMTS. Look at NPE if you're in plastics. Like Look at the trade shows and say, 
which one is the biggest in the industry that I can go into because everybody in that space is going to be there. And don't look at it and say, I can only afford a 10 by 10 booth. That's not going to matter as we go throughout these six points that I have to talk about. It matters that you're there. It matters that you're you're going to it, that you're exhibiting at it, that you're going to do all the things that I'm going to review. So the first thing is pick the show, whether you're walking or exhibiting. The next thing is going to be the collateral. And what I mean by collateral from a marketing standpoint is what are you going to collateral? Maybe that's how you spell it. Um, what are you going to do from a standpoint with your marketing to create something that's going to promote you guys at this show. And so we'll get into the pre-show marketing next, but you have to look at your collateral and say, how am I going to stand out? Too often times people are generating collateral that looks like everybody else. So go through LinkedIn, go through the feed, look at your competitors, look at, if you exhibit it at the trade show, grab the show programs, look how people are setting up their displays and advertising. How can you be completely different to stand out? One thing that nobody ever thinks about, this is a massive tip. So let's say that this is my trade show, right? And this is like, I don't know, a six foot, a six foot spread on this whiteboard. This is what usually happens when you're designing the booth backdrop. People design the booth backdrop to be head to toe awesome, right? With colors and words and all that. But if I'm at the booth, if I'm at the trade show and people are walking by where you guys are and walking by where Jordan is right now, uh, and, and this is my open space. If you notice, nobody can really see anything that's like chest or below. So if you've got two people in the booth, you can't see what's behind me. You can't see this stuff. So when you're designing your booth backdrops, you need to make sure that it's at least waist to chest high and above from a relevant information standpoint. You can certainly fill up this lower space with cool graphics designs, things like that. But the majority of your content has to be chest and above because as people are walking by, I'm walking down an aisle and I look at a booth, I'm going to look up versus try and look through the person and look at what's behind them. That's step number one. The positioning of your collateral, where are you putting the items? You need to have a clear open space in your booth. You need to be able to have people come in and out easily. You also need to remove all chairs from your booth. There should be no chairs whatsoever. You need to be able to be standing 95% of the time if you do have to sit you better make sure that the, there's at least one or two people working that booth for for anybody that's walking by but you need to be lively and active and have collateral out here that's going to draw people in so as, as people are walking by put yourself in their shoes people are walking by they're looking at the booths up and down they go to the next one and <clears throat> it's different if you have a massive booth so if you work for a big company you got a 40 by 60 a 60 by 80 booth <clears throat> some of the ones that were at fabtech were massive just the presence is taking out the space. But for the smaller companies that are 10 by 20, 20 by 30, just understand that the main aisleways, as people are walking by, you want to make sure that your collateral is going to stand out from them and draw their attention in. So whether it's a TV, a giveaway, a bottle of whiskey, a drone, whatever it is, just make sure that all of your relevant information back here is at least chest height and above because people are always missing the mark. When we were walking through uh, Fabtech and md &M, uh, last year, it's like people are still designing trade show booth backdrops all the way down to the floor. Keep that information above and make sure it's very simple. You're trying to draw their attention and you're trying to use relevant words that are going to hook them in. So it does not matter if it's a LinkedIn post organically, a paid ad, your booth backdrop, the brochure. You're trying to say, what are three words that I can use that are going to hook them in to then read further below it? Let's get into number three. Number three is going to be your pre-show marketing. When should it start? So your pre-show should start, I would say, minimum. If it's a big trade show like one in August or September, October this year, I would start marketing today as much time as you possibly can. If you can market you know, three, six, nine months ahead of time, you need to start doing it. You don't want to be wrapped up into all the people that wait until eight weeks before the show, and then they start their marketing, right? They, they wait eight weeks, nine weeks, and then it's like everybody's doing hashtag this, hashtag that, posting all this content. You don't want to have to wait that long. You want to try and do it as early as possible. Create content that is original. It does not matter. You'll see it on our channel and on my page, um, just shooting video content that's like this, saying, <clears throat> saying, uh, hey, we're going to be at the show. Are you guys going to be at the show? Put the hashtag in there. Follow that hashtag MDM West. So, like for instance, we're going to be at MDM MDM West next month, which is in roughly 32 days. We're going to be at it. We're bringing a team. There's going to be 
four of us they're going to be there we're going to start we already started marketing it last month we're going to market it this month and we're going to shoot raw content be like if you guys are going to be there check us out we're already going to be doing research following people on linkedin that are using that hashtag companies that are attending going and looking at the exhibitor list and saying these are the people we want to go after these are the booths we want to pay attention to but you have to start all that pre-show marketing as early as possible if you're doing something like a giveaway drones whiskey liquor things like that are going to work great give away a tv give away a 3d printer give away something that's going to stop the audience as they're walking by and you have to figure out what's relevant to them based on who you're going after purchasing people are going to care about one thing engineers are going to care about a different ops is going to care about something third what is it that you can give away what is it that you can have at your booth during the event that's going to draw their attention and i would look at giving away some sort of tech so like when we're at fabtech 2024 this year give away a drone give away some whiskey give away something like that to draw people in to get attention but all of that marketing is going to be done months and months and months in advance if you don't have a time that's fine if it's like kyle I, our shows in like our shows in february our shows in march start doing it today but you have to create so much content to push out there because it is noisy pushing out on linkedin creating a web page on your website this is something that people don't often do is have have a web page on your website that says imts 2024 for like forward slash whatever the url is and put everything that you're gonna be doing there your giveaway videos your services what your booth number is a link to your uh to get a free pass to it put all that on the web page and then just push that web page out along with raw video content raw graphics things like that that's the tactic that you need to push out there because What's going to happen is once you get to under eight weeks in, everybody's going to start doing it. So the sooner you can do it, the better. Have something that's unique and different. Look at what everybody else is posting. If everybody's posting graphics of their booth backdrop, like I saw one this morning, Fabtech 2024, they did the rendering of their booth, and it's a massive booth. It's like, I don't know, probably like 4,000, 8,000 square foot booth, and they just did the whole 3D rendering of what it's going to look like. That's 10 months away. That's a smart move. You want to post that stuff as early as possible so people start thinking. There's less noise around it now than there will be in nine months. So they're trying to already grab people that are interested in it. They're trying to grab people that are already paying attention to it so they can get listed as a booth that those potential people want to stop by. So start that stuff early. The next thing is going to be working the booth. This is like by far work the booth. This is by far <clears throat> the weakest area of most industrial companies when it comes to working the actual trade show. You're only going to get in whatever you, you're only going to get out whatever you put in, right? And still even today, still even a few months ago, still even probably next month when I'm at MDM West in Anaheim, I'm going to see the same thing. This is what you get. You get a lot of people sitting down and we're going to put some B-roll footage out on our website or out on YouTube of the footage that we caught. So when we were at Fabtech, I'm like, Jordan, get that person, get that person, film that. People are just sitting down. They're sitting like this, looking at their phone or standing there looking at their phone. And then as people come by, you see the classic, they look you in the eyes, look down at your name tag, and then determine whether or not they want to talk to you. So they're trying to pre-qualify people as they walk by. You have to be working the booth as much as possible. So if we, if we draw up your booth, and let's just say for argument's sake, it's a basic square, right? Or a rec, let's say a rectangle. And this is your booth here. And this is the aisleway and the flow of traffic. Flow of traffic is going both directions. You do not need to be sitting inside of your booth. You should have people out here in the aisleway, in the front of the booth. You want to have that booth as empty as possible. So when... If this is my booth and I'm working it, and I've done this dozens of times, you want to have everything clear in the space and you want to be out in the aisleway talking to people. And as they walk by, hey, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Susie. How's it going? Compliment. <laughs> you guys think this is funny? Uh, compliment. <laughs> You're what? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I should say, I should say steady, right? Uh, so as people are walking around, you need to be able to have conversations with them and say, like, hey, good morning, giving them one compliment, engage with them. If you have some sort of stress ball or something like that, that would work best. So you can be like, hey, you interested in stress ball, football, things like that. You want to engage with them somehow, ask them questions as they're out in the aisle. And then if they want to have a conversation with them, you can take them into your booth. 
But the, the key is that you need to be standing out there <clears throat> and working the booth. When I was at Fabtech, I, I tagged a company in a post. I filmed it and said, these two guys are working this booth amazingly. We've got footage of that and we created a video from it. And they're engaging, asking questions, complimenting people as they walk by. But that's the key is that you have to be out in this aisle way and not in the booth. I know that you guys watching this are probably like, no, Kyle, I'm always in the aisle way. You're not because I've seen you guys and you're in there for some of the time, but I'm talking about all of the time, never sitting down, stand there. We watched Fabtech. <clears throat> we probably walked that show for what, like eight hours, nine hours. We were at Fabtech in cowboy boots, 10 hours. Jordan's saying 10 hours in cowboy boots. We walked the show did not sit down. Even when we sat down, we were eating lunch for like 20 minutes outside. That was it. We walked the entire thing. I had a 30 pound backpack on my back with all of our stuff. So did Jordan, the rest of the team as well. We had swag with us. I know what it's like to be tired and your feet hurt and all that. You're in a booth, put down a better mat than what you have. Walk out in that aisle where you only get one shot. You, your company spent money for you to work that booth, so you better be working it. If you're going to D2P trade shows designed to part, they're probably the worst at this. Companies that exhibit there, there's a higher frequency of those people that are just sitting there. They've got a chair, a stool, a bench, something in the back, and they're just sitting there waiting for somebody to come by. Hey, oh, you want to have a conversation? Let me get off of my perch and come have a conversation with you. You need to be out in that aisle. I cannot stress it enough. Next trade show that you go to, look at those people that are drawing attention. And it's going to be people that are walking around and working that booth and not just standing there be like, hey, good morning. Hey, how's it going? Just like ask them a question. Hey, do you guys have any need for some metal forming equipment? What is it that you guys do at this company? You need to be engaging and draw them in. And you need to be smiling and happy about it. Just being like, good morning. Good morning. How is it? How are you doing? Like that's nobody's going to want to talk to you. So you need to draw them in by being personable, having conversations out in that aisle way, give away something for free, ask them to to put in your business card for a free chance at a drone giveaway, a, a bottle of whiskey. When we were at Fabtech, somebody was doing a putting challenge. You had to nail three putts to then get uh, put into this raffle to give away a bottle of whiskey. So there's lots of different tricks and tactics that you can use to do it. But the key is that when you're working that booth, when you're at that trade show, I don't care if you're the owner of your company and you spent $5,000 or if you're the head of sales or a sales engineer, and they spent $50,000, you better be working that booth as much as you can to collect information, have conversations, get the leads in, and then determine what you want to do with them after that. So that's the key, work the booth. And if you guys tell me that you're doing it, I guarantee I'll, I'll mystery shop you and show that you're not. So number five, purchase a list. Some of you guys know that you can do this. Some of you guys know that you don't know that you can. So you want to purchase a list from the trade show of the attendees based on some criteria, based on the form, the survey that they filled out, you want to purchase that list. And, and you want to purchase it from a standpoint of, they've said that they're interested in this. It does not matter if they came to your booth. This could cost you two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 to get this list. It is important, it's relevant. If you guys are doing it on your own. If you guys are partnering with MFG Tribe, you don't necessarily always have to purchase that list because we have little sneaky ways that we can get that information and other things we can do from an advertising standpoint. But if you guys are going at this on your own, purchase that list because you can do so much with that information. I want to know the, the 1,800 people, the 600 people, the 220 people that said, I'm coming to this trade show to see 3D printing, and I do 3D printing. Those people didn't stop my booth. I've already got the list of the people that did, and there's only 20 people on that list, but here's 200 other people that did not stop my booth. I want to have a conversation with them. And that's going to go into the next step. But the first step is purchase the list. It is well worth it. It is not worth it to do show programs, guides, the email, stuff like that. I have never seen that work well, where it's going to cost you $1,500, $2,500 to have a full page ad in the show program. Who actually reads that? Yet the, the trade show companies push that and say, it's going to be seen by 48,000 people. It's not. They all get it. I get it. I use it as a paperweight in my office. Sometimes I flip through it to look at it from an advertising standpoint. Most of the time we flip through it and say, I want to go after all of these companies that are advertising at this trade show. I want to go after them, try and get them to be a client of MFG Tribe. That's all that we use it for. So don't think that somebody's going to see your full page ad in a show program or see your uh, side banner ad on the website. It's going to drive traffic. It could work, but usually it doesn't. If you think that it will work, ask for statistics. If you already spent money on it, ask them to prove to you how many people click that 
and went to your website? How many people responded to the email, clicked something in the email they sent out before the show or they sent out to their journal? I mean, that goes into the whole print advertising thing and how I'm against it a lot from a data standpoint. But prove it to me that it actually works. Prove it to me that it even got traffic to my website. That's step one. Step two is then converting that traffic into an opportunity. But purchasing that list, taking that away from it, you don't have to rely on them. You can say, here's 100 people, 1,000 people, 2,000 people. I'm going to do marketing with them on LinkedIn, email, phone calls, snail mail, direct advertising, retargeting, geo, like anything. You can do anything with that information. So information is key. Purchase that list. The last thing, and probably the most important, does not matter what you do in the first five. This is what matters the most, is the follow-up. You can mess this up and not purchase the list. You can suck at working booths. You can not do enough pre-show marketing. Your collateral isn't the best, and you picked the wrong show. But if you got somebody to have a conversation with you, and they seemed interested, and it is a potential opportunity, following up is going to be the one that determines is that ROI positive or not. Now, what do I mean by following up? Most industrial people will follow up once or twice, or they send out an email or they have a phone call and that is it. If you have a hundred leads from a trade show that you work for four or five days with five sales engineers there, you need to go through that list and follow up with everybody at least five to 10 times using different methods. That's the key. If I send somebody an email saying, hey, great conversation with you at this trade show, at IMTS, at Fabtech, at MPE, at Automate, at Pack Expo, great conversation with you. I wanted to follow up and see if we can have a conversation to talk about our solution to the problem that you identified in when we met. If you send that out and expect somebody to just respond immediately and be like, yes, I do want to have a conversation with you. I want it to happen next Tuesday at 11 a.m. and I'm looking forward to having uh, a potential opportunity to work together, that is usually not going to happen. You have to be persistent and consistent with the follow-up. You have to continuously do it and do different methods. Send them an email, send them a connection request on LinkedIn, send a message on LinkedIn, give them a phone call, send them snail mail. If people are ghosting you, you had a conversation with them, and it's been a month or two months since that show, send them some stuff in the mail. Hey, just want to send you this gift. Just want to send you some swag. You want to stay and be remembered. The only way to do that is going to be able to, or the only way to do that is going to be by changing your methods of follow-up. You cannot just rely on one single method. When you're having the conversation with the, the person and they give you the business card and let you scan the badge, as they leave the booth, send them a connection request on LinkedIn. Great talking with you in the note. Invite them on LinkedIn to send the connection request. That's the way to do it. Because then you're already connected with them. Now you can message them. So you're fresh in their mind. Send them a connection request right then. Send them a connection request when you go to lunch and when you're done at the end of the day, going through all the business cards that you got, going through the leads that you retrieved, work and send every single one of those people a connection request and put in the invitation note. Great seeing you at this trade show, looking forward to having future conversations with you or something like that. They're going to see it. They're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember that guy or girl. Click accept. Now you've got them on their mobile device way easier than you do through email because LinkedIn is less noisy for those people. But the follow-up is what is key. It does not matter how much money you spend or lack of money you spend, as long as you have conversations by working the booth and any opportunities you get. If you get one opportunity from a trade show and that's worth $50,000 and you spent only $6,000 to get there or $16,000 to get there, it's ROI positive. Now you can tweak and perfect all of the other five areas to make sure that you get the biggest bang for your buck. But at a minimum, go back to every trade show you guys exhibited at last year every trade show you attended and go and reach out to all those people. Cause those are people you had actual conversations with face to face time. They will remember you. Here's a hack. If you really want to get in front of people and you think that the email is going to be too noisy, send them a video. The best way to send them a video is going to be using Vidyard. We started using it about four months ago and the results have been great. Sending them a video saying, Hey, remember I saw you at this trade show. You stopped by our booth. I was looking on your website. I was going through the stuff. I think this would be a great fit for you. Here's a piece of equipment. Here's a highlight that we have. Whatever it is, something to stand out. That's going to be the best way to do it. But the follow-up is critical. That's in all sales. Follow-up is what separates those that are making massive amount of income for themselves and those that are making just good income. All comes down to the follow-up. You need to have a system to organize it. Hopefully something like HubSpot, Salesforce, anything out there, even if it's a spreadsheet. But the follow-up is what's going to make the difference between are you massively getting a return on your investment? Are you just working like, I talked to 100 people, 50 of them were 
not right now type. 10 people told me no. 15 people, like where it all comes down to, there was only three good conversations. I have three opportunities and all three of those are dead. We did not win them. Dude, you've got 97 other people that you can reach out to. So that I would not look at that trade show as negative. I would say you need to work those 97 people. I would tell my sales team, you need to work them in all different areas. And then once you're done working them, go after their boss, their direct uh, employees, if they're a manager, their coworkers, other departments, go after everybody to go after that omnipresence and work them as hard as possible. If you guys are new to my content, head over to YouTube. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. We're posting about 30 to 50 videos a week starting in 2024. Tons of content, behind the scenes content. You guys haven't even seen it yet. Episodes on a new series we're calling Miked Up, where I am miked up for the day, showing the day-to-day, behind the scenes, conversation, strategy, customer issues, internal stuff, everything in between. Also, we will be bringing back one of the shows we used to do a few years ago called Make Cool Shit TV. We will be bringing that back in 2024. All of that content, though, is going to be on YouTube. So you better head over, type in my name, subscribe to it, turn on notifications. If you guys aren't following me on LinkedIn yet and you're just coming across this, make sure you hit that follow button. Send me a connection request if it's relevant. I will accept it. If it's not, I won't. I will see you guys on the next one.